Bowser is one of Nintendo's most diverse characters ever. Just look at 2021, for example. By the summer, he's gonna be donning pants and a sweet flame cap to go and play some golf with his buddies. But in February... Oh. Oh, he's mildly upset. Bowser's Fury plus Super Mario 3D World, which is realistically what it should be called if you really ask yourself, is the latest and arguably most interesting Wii U to Switch port Nintendo has done yet. Say what you will about the whole idea of re-releasing older games for full price, but make no mistake about it, it is absolutely no surprise that Mario, of all franchises, was gonna get the star treatment when it comes to this situation. Let's not forget last time they did this, where they introduced the world to oh, Peachette, yeah, yeah. and uh, the internet's never been the same since. Just the mere concept of a Wii U port is enough to get some people all riled up nowadays. Or, should I say, furious. And you know what? That's fair. Charging more for the Switch version of Tropical Freeze than what it was initially on the Wii U when they just added Funky Kong and that's it was certainly not much of a funky move. Some games like Captain Toad and Hyrule Warriors did receive additions that were a bit more substantial, but it really wasn't until Pikmin 3 Deluxe's new side stories or even Xenoblade Chronicles' entire post-game story where where it seemed like Nintendo was actually putting in a decent amount of effort finally. Yeah, the latter was a Wii port, not a Wii U port, but hey, my point still stands. And that leads us to now, Bowser's Fury, without a doubt the most ambitious edition of them all. As someone who was already around during the Wii U days to already buy these games once before at full price, it does kinda sting that it took this long to get to a point where double dipping is actually kinda worth it instead of just doing it for the sake of it, but hey. At least it's 3D World this time around. Maybe people will finally give the game a proper shot. This was actually the announcement I was the most excited for during that big Mario 35th Anniversary Direct. Now don't get me wrong here, having a portable Mario Galaxy is really cool and I am super excited for Mario's public execution on March 31st, aren't we all? But going on that adventure through the Sprixie Kingdom again in 3D World and this whole entirely new mysterious Bowser's Fury mode? Oh yeah man, sign me up, I am in. I just love this game so much, man. I know opinions on it have shifted plenty over the years since its initial release, but the amount of complaining about this not being a quote, real 3D Mario game was always so absurd to me. Sure, on the topic of ambition, it certainly seemed less ambitious for Mario's first big HD adventure to be a sorta sequel to a 3DS game, but I always looked at 3D World for what it was and not for what it wasn't. And boy, with that mindset, I had a fantastic time with this game and all these years later, I have such fond memories of it. The amount of new ideas tossed at you every few minutes with characters that feel great to control, it does the same exact thing Galaxy was doing, just with a more traditional level design format and a fixed camera. I like Galaxy a whole lot more, but this is also very nice. And also, the 1-up trick in level 2 still confirms that lives are a dated concept in gaming nowadays, so... That's also nice. Oh, one of the best soundtracks ever featured in a Mario game too, by the way. Oh man, Double Cherry Pass has been consistently stuck on my head since 2013. It is so good. Regarding this deluxe version, it doesn't really change all that much, but the additional speed for the characters cannot be understated. <laughs> I didn't even think the original game was that slow, but then I played as Toad in the Switch version and... I'm stunned. Oh my god, he's fast. Princess Peach, the slowest of the characters, is now faster than Toad was in the Wii U version. That's incredible. Some UI elements were changed around as well, I know that's pretty boring in the grand scheme of things, but I do find little modifications like this kind of interesting. Look, they removed the X next to the player life count. Clearly, this was important. Also, you can now move around a cursor with gyro aiming to replace the gamepad touchscreen functionality, and that is something I am definitely a fan of. I always hated that I could play the Wii U version with a pro controller, but ah, once you get to one of those levels that needs the microphone or the touchscreen, the game literally forbids you from playing them until you turn that controller on. That's dumb, and I'm glad to see it's fixed. That's not entirely without sacrifice, though, because you can no longer do the Wii U thing where you can blow into the microphone to blow away the little mini goon. So, trash. But the question still remains, is it worth full price? Now that Odyssey is out there fulfilling that real 3D Mario game desire, maybe 3D World can have the second shot in the mainstream that it deserves that it should have deserved the first time around. I mean, my hot take is I like 3D World more than Odyssey, but hey, that's neither here nor there. We'll talk about it some other time. Put down your pitchforks. But with all that being said, Bowser's one angry lad this time around. 
Bowser's Fury is often considered to be theoretical DLC for Mario Odyssey, more so than 3D World, due to how different the playstyle is. And you know what? I can totally get behind that. I mean, it starts off the same way. Mario plummets from the sky and lands headfirst into the ground. He is developing a knack for this. Also, it's kind of taking cues from Sonic, so... I can respect that. That inked M on the floor though in the opening? Nice touch. Direct reference to Super Mario Sunshine. I like it. Potentially brings up some sunshine inflicted PTSD, but otherwise, I like it. When you really think about it, this is probably the closest we'll ever get to Sunshine 2, which, you know, that kind of stings, but I'll take what I can get. So the premise of this adventure is pretty straightforward. I think. One day, Mario stumbles upon a portal that leads to a new land, Lake Lapcat. And thanks to a brief synopsis by Bowser Jr., it seems like he was painting his big old dad, but accidentally used too much black ink, which ended up corrupting him, making him huge and kinda pissed off every five minutes. It's actually a pretty similar plot to Paper Mario Color Splash, which is kind of strange, but okay. But ultimately, it is still a mindless plot, and while normally all you need is that minor push to get Mario to do some platforming, boy, that Fury Bowser stuff is super, super cool. But we'll get to that. And right off the bat, once you really get the game started, yeah, this is now once again a free roaming open world with full camera control and the ability to go wherever you want to tackle objectives in any order you desire. It is a stark contrast to 3D World, but having an open world with 3D World's control style, it's actually pretty cool. The comparisons to Odyssey are very obvious, but honestly, I think I enjoy this setup a lot more. Lake Lapcat is set up with a series of different themed islands, each one having a handful of missions attached to them, and zero loading times to travel to any of them. You just go off in a single direction for long enough and then bam, new location, often with a new music track to accompany it. Getting major Jack and Daxter vibes from this and that is pretty cool. For all the flack the Switch gets for its lack of power, this is really impressive. Even being able to just go really high and then look over at the vast landscape and see that those places, you can go there, that's really, really cool. Something that I feel like the Switch you wouldn't normally expect. But the real kicker to me is that for each mission, the island seamlessly changes when you're not looking, rearranging obstacles and platforms to offer a brand new challenge. I streamed my playthrough of this over on my Twitch page and it was consistently surprising me that like, legit, you can get one of the cat shines, walk away a little bit and turn the camera around, turn the camera back to the island and boom, new stuff. That's incredible. On your journey, you're off to collect, like I said before, cat shines. Interesting return to the shine formula, but okay. There are 100 of them in total, and they are all based on actual challenges. One of my biggest issues with Odyssey was a lot of the filler stuff that I think made a completion run feel pretty bloated. But here, you got precise platforming, bringing a key to a locked cage, time limit obstacle courses, climbing tall towers. It is the bite-sized gameplay style that we're all familiar with, just with the added element of truly feeling like you can do anything you want and go anywhere you want at any given time, with little to no filler. It's still there, but not that much. Aw oh, yeah, and Plessy shows up too. You just jump on whenever you want to and you start moving. I love Plessy so much. <laughs> There are so many little nooks and crannies spread throughout Lake Lapcat as well. There is such a sense of wonder from exploring that I haven't really experienced in a long time. Odyssey. Yeah, yeah, I think Odyssey was the last time I felt that. Also, everything is now cats. I don't know if you noticed that part. There's Goomba cats, Piranha Plant cats, Bullet Bill cats, Cats cats. It's a little strange, for sure. Seeing a Koopa with a fur texture is pretty unsettling, I will admit, but all in all, I'm okay with this. I'm assuming the next Mario game is gonna be dog-themed. Who needs a PlayStation 5 when the Switch is clearly powerful enough to handle both open worlds and fur technology all at the same time? Hell, we clearly don't even need a Switch Pro. Ah, truly incredible. But then, the expected happens. Bowser gets pissed off. Every few minutes, the bright and colorful Lake Lapcat falls under a dangerous rainstorm. And then... Uh-oh. Dude, this... this entire concept is crazy. There's like this heavy rock music that starts playing. Fire rains from the sky, a flame breath can blast you from nearly across the entire map. And sometimes... This big boy just shows up. You pan the camera the wrong way just once. Jesus. Oh God, during all this time, the normal cats turn evil as well. Catches me off guard every time, but I get it. You know, it's revenge. There was this one time I took a little baby kitten in the game and tossed it off a cliff and it disintegrated. So I get it, they're all pissed. This is my fault. Still didn't expect this though. The level of intensity coming from Fury Bowser and all this flame and destruction, it is so unexpected for a Mario game like this, but I love it. 
I love it so much. And thankfully, we have the chance to combat this evil threat. Collect enough cat shines, you can open up this giant bell, and Mario can go Super Saiyan. Or, because it's also in a cat suit, this is Mario going Super Saiyan. Nian. Yeah, I'm not apologizing for that one. And now it's just basically a giant kaiju fight against a pissed off Bowser. This dynamic is so absurd! But it is so cool being able to fight Bowser in the land you were just platforming in. It's really cool. Some of the cat shines are only collectible while Fury Bowser is around though, so that's a bit annoying because normally it is a timed event. Using a Bowser amiibo can summon him whenever you want, so I was able to breeze through these final few shines pretty easily, but if you don't own one, then yeah, that final push to completion, that can kinda suck. Probably exciting for speedrunners, plotting out their paths in such a way that they're always at Bowser blocks when Fury Bowser awakens, but for the casual playthrough, not so much. Like, there's also this golden platform that shows up with a whopping five shines on it that only shows up when Fury Bowser's around, but you can only get one of them at a time. You get one, Bowser gets tired, you wake him back up, the platform comes back down. This mode gets a whole lot right, but it's not without its dumb moments. Otherwise, though, yeah, Bowser's Fury rocks. Retooling some of the traditional sandbox Mario mechanics and blending it together with a huge seamless open world, you tie in a fantastic soundtrack and a continuing blend of the Mario and Bowser Jr. buddy dynamic that we've seen in the RPGs, and we damn near have a masterpiece here. And it's a side mode. But I mean, clearly they're planting the seeds for something in the future, right? Odyssey 2? Hard to say, but I highly doubt this is the last we'll see of something like this. Hell, given the purely challenge-based nature of the cat shines and the large singular world, the more time passes, I would almost go as far as to say I like this more than the entirety of Odyssey. Certainly more replayable at least, in my opinion. And it has me really excited for the future of Mario. But back to the earlier question, does that justify the $60 price tag attached to 3D World? Well, that's always subjective, but I do understand the concern. I love the main game, I love 3D World, but I know that it's not everybody's cup of tea. And before, any updates to Wii U games with ports were designed around the game that's being ported. Now we have an older, linear Mario game with a new open world Mario game attached to it, so yeah, it's a bit of an odd situation. It's pretty short as well. Bowser's Fury takes about three hours to see the credits and then another three hours to fully complete. It's highly replayable once again, so that definitely adds more worth to it all. But if you're a one and done type of gamer, that is definitely something to consider. Bowser's Fury is easily, without a doubt, the most enticing addition to a Wii U game the Switch has seen yet, but those are still some things worth asking before taking the plunge yourself. Also, 3D World is still amazing. I don't care if you liked it or not during the Wii U days, play it again. It's really, really good. In my eyes, you get two great games all in one package, and thankfully, unlike Super Mario 3D All-Stars and Super Mario Bros. 35, this game will not be getting delisted at the end of March 2020. And that's awesome. I'm sure they wanted to do it, but then they probably remember during development, oh yeah, that's right, this is the game where in level 2, you can get infinite 1-ups. It's legitimately impossible to kill it. But realistically, it is pretty cool to know that the Switch is home to many of Mario's greatest adventures. All we need now is Galaxy 2, and we'll be right as rain. Maybe by the end of the year? I don't know. I'm getting sick of waiting, but it is what it is. Mario, happy anniversary. I hope you survive your public execution on March 31st, 2020. I know I'll be watching, but for everyone else out there, I guess we'll be back talking about the plumbers soon enough, because Mario Month is almost upon us, and I think you're all going to really enjoy it. Until then, though, Take care. <laughs>